Hello, I'm Marnie Brooks. Our world is changing. No longer can we depend on an endless supply of oil. So we have to become more energy efficient. Increasingly, engineers are turning to solar and hydrogen power for answers to tomorrow's energy needs. With that in mind, the U.S. Merchant Marines and the New York Institute of Technology were in a competition to build the first solar hydrogen home. But they weren't alone. The brothers and sisters of the IBEW were there every step of the way, lending a hand, not to mention a little know-how. Joe Shanahan, business representative for Local 25, says the IBEW was glad to help. Local 25 likes to show that they're always involved with the community and are willing to give back whenever is possible. When the work was done, it marked another first for the IBEW, a hand in what's being called the first complete stable energy home. And now for a tour. Here's Our Power's Dominic Geritano and lead engineer Greg Sachs. It was a beautiful day on Long Island. The skies were clear and the sun was shining. Sitting underneath, soaking up all the rays, is what appears to be a normal house. But instead of being connected to the grid, it's powered by these solar panels. Our cameras caught up with one of the guys responsible for all the bells and whistles. Hello, my name is Greg Sachs. I am the program manager for the Alternative Power Program here at the United States Merchant Marine Academy. What we have here is America's first solar hydrogen home. This home gets all of the energy it needs to operate purely from the sun. But what makes this house unique is that instead of storing energy in batteries, it actually stores energy in the form of hydrogen gas. Why don't we take a look inside? And so we did. Sachs took us on a visitor's eye tour of the house. And the first stop was the kitchen. The appliances are all powered by solar energy. The fridge, the stove, the washer and dryer are all energy efficient. We follow Greg into the living room where the conservation continued. The couch has solar panels on the back. They power individual fans and heaters to either keep you cool or warm. If you've ever eaten sunflower seeds, I bet you never thought they could be compressed into a desktop. But they can in this house, like this one. The desk chair is made out of recycled cardboard. The floor is recycled bamboo. The insulation is compressed wheat straw, eight inches of it for Pete's sake. Greg then took us upstairs to the lofted bedroom. From here you can see out the windows to the front of the house where the solar panels are. This house doesn't have a walkout basement. It has a walkout roof and that's where things get technical. So let's let Greg explain that. All right, here we have the roof garden and one of the neatest things on the roof garden is the solar hot water system. Now, typical photovoltaic panels are solar electric. These are actually solar thermal. They take energy from the sun and make hot water directly. It doesn't turn it into electricity first to make hot water. It goes directly into making the water very hot. Right below the water heaters, they've built a garden. In this house, you don't even have to go to the market to get your fruits or vegetables. By this point, we've seen the solar panels, and we know that the water is heated from the sun's energy. But behind the house is where you'll find the guts of the operation. Out back is where the energy goes from the 54 solar panels. When we asked Greg how the power is used, he said, We have to do one of two things with that power. Either we're going to use it right away for our kitchen, our computer, the TV, or we're going to store that energy. Power comes down off the roof through this big three inch conduit and gets conditions throughout all this equipment. The energy comes through these two white boxes and gets converted from DC to AC for immediate use. If it's not used right away, the energy gets sent to the hydrogen generator where the power changes from AC to hydrogen. Greg filled us in on how it all works. As we know, water is H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. This hydrogen generator is going to take water from this tank right here, and it's going to take energy from the solar panels, these cables right here. It's going to take that water and split it apart. 
the hydrogen is actually going to go through this line. And we're going to store it in a hydrogen gas room on the other side of this wall. The hydrogen is stored in these tanks. There's enough energy in them to power the house for a week without the sun's help. In order to use the power in these tanks, the process needs to be reversed. Seems complicated, which is why Greg made it easy for us. This white guy on the roof here is a fuel cell. It takes hydrogen gas and oxygen in the air and, can, and makes water. So hydrogen and oxygen, we make water again. Byproducts of this process is also electricity. The water that comes from the fuel cell actually drains right back into the tank where we started the process from the very beginning. The tour ended there, but Greg wanted to thank the IBEW for their efforts. I hope you've liked our tour of this America's first solar hydrogen home. As lead engineer for this project, I'd like to thank the IBEW Local 25 for their incredible effort in helping us build this house. For months, they helped us wire up the fuel cell systems, the electrolyzer, put all the solar panels on the roof. Without their help, this house would not have been a reality. Thank you. For IBEW Our Power, I'm Dominic Giratano. In the years to come, we'll hopefully depend less on oil for energy and we'll begin to see the bright future of solar power. The innovation, technology, and teamwork that went into this project proves it's possible today. I'm Marnie Brooks. See you next time.